today I am going to introduce to you one of my favorite new cameras. Matter of fact, well, it's not really new, it's been out for a while. As a matter of fact, you can't even buy it anymore, but actually you can on eBay. Anyway, okay, this is the Samsung NX500. This is such a cool camera. Oh my God, I don't even know how to start describing it rather than just, I'm just gonna show you some pictures I took with it. Let's start with that. These were taken with this camera and it just blows my mind. It looks like 3D images taken with like some magical camera. It's so silky smooth. The backgrounds are out of focus. The colors are amazing. This is just such a cool, amazing camera. Its sensor is 1.6 times bigger than any Micro Four Thirds sensor. It has more depth of field, more blurrier backgrounds. Compared to the 6400, it has 26 megapixels versus the 6400 which only has 24. The NX500 ISO speeds go from 100 to over 25,000. The maximum shutter speed is 1 6,000th. The LCD resolution is 1036 versus the Sony 6400 which is only 922K. The 6400 weighs 403 grams whereas the NX500 only weighs 287. Much lighter. The NX500 has autofocus phase detection. Unfortunately the maximum sync speed is only 1 200th but that's where ND filters can come in. It has no anti-alias filter or low-pass filter, but this allows for sharper images, so I'd rather have that. Nine frames per second continuous shooting. The video resolution is 4096 by 2160 H.265 codec versus the Sony 6400, which only has 3840 resolution by 2160. The NX500 is built-in wireless. It doesn't have a built-in flash, but those built-in flashes are usually useless anyway on any camera, so they use their real estate much more wisely. It has time-lapse. You can control it with your smartphone, it has a great LCD screen, it's really clear, sharp, and bright. And the pictures it takes just look like movie scenes. They're almost 3D, a really silky look. Great bokeh and background blur. The 6400 dynamic range is 13.6, whereas the dynamic range of the NX500 is 13.9. So this camera actually has more dynamic range than the 6400. I love the interface. Their camera is pretty darn amazing. As a matter of fact, I have in my bag here, a 6400. Here's a brand new Sony 6400 and I haven't even used it on this trip yet. Why? It weighs almost half as much as the 6400. It has higher resolution and the pictures are just so cool. Now the only thing about this compared to the, the 6400 is it does not have a digital eyepiece, which is why I use this, this little portable thing so I can look through here when I take pictures. Which is, which is fine, I mean it works just good. Uh, it has a tilt up screen, so you can do selfies. Yay! Like that's the big thing nowadays. You can see it's not really that big of a camera. It's just big enough to have a lens on there. Um, APS-C, it has a hot shoe, so you can do off camera flash. And my two favorite lenses, these are the only two lenses I take with me, are, this looks bigger than it really is because of the this thing on there and then I have two polarizing, I have a polarizer and an ND on there so I can do my uh, 1.4 pictures but this is my 85. This is the lens that gives you the, it's an amazing portrait lens, really good, uh, really really creamy backgrounds and then for wider shots I have my 45 1.8. The 85 1.4 and the 45 1.8. Uh, <laughs> it has a button on this side that says 2D and 3D. It, it really does make 3D looking images. It's just amazing. I don't even know how to describe the words of what it's like to use this. Not only is the, are the pictures cool when you look at them, but using the camera is kind of fun too. I love the interface. It's easy to understand. It's fun to use. It's colorful. It's like a little video game. It's cute. It has HDMI on the side so you can you know put a monitor up to it if you want. Hot shoe. It's got a nice little, it has two thumb wheels, one on top, and one on the back here. These are really, really tactile, really good little thumb uh, dials that you can adjust your f-stops, your shutter speeds, or anything else that you program it to do. Really well thought out. I just love it. And it takes great video. It's got a really nice look to it, and it has like that 3D feel. It's definitely a great camera for doing my YouTube videos. The only downsides I can think of is that it does not have an, an EVF to look through. I know once you put the 85 on here, it's which is a pretty heavy lens. This is the heaviest lens I have with me on this trip. Uh, it's not the smallest camera in the world compared to the Micro Four Thirds, but 
just the look of it, if I want something really magical and silky in 3D, I always reach for the NX500. This is my favorite magical 3D silky background camera that I have. So here's the size difference between the NX500 and the 6400. They're pretty much exact same camera, the same size, same size, except the 6400 is twice as heavy almost as the NX500. And there are some other differences, but they're very comparable. Um, but in the real world, in the practical world, if, you if you're running a gun and you don't know what you're getting into and you, you just need, you're gonna have a million different situations, the 6400 is the, realistically the one to have because it has an eyepiece, an EVF, and it can sync, flash sync up to like a four thousandth of a second. This one can only flash sync up to a two hundredth of a second and then you'll need ND filters for that. But it's just a, I mean, this is the one to use if you have, if you only have to have one camera as a 6400, but if you're a buff like me and you like to have fun and play with stuff, this one is really good for controlled lighting situations, like indoors where you can really control the light. You can get some really amazing silky smooth effects with this thing. I just like the look that it gives. And I have a Canon adapter so I can put Canon lenses, really good ones on here. I don't have to use Samsung lenses. There are adapters. So again, under controlled lighting situations, I prefer this camera actually. Uh, it just has a really nice look to it. It's hard to explain some things you just can't explain technically, but this camera has a really nice look. They're still pretty expensive. They're not that cheap. And there's a reason for that. People know how good these things are. The 6400, practical, everyday, you know, if you have to grab something on it and you don't know what you're getting into, I would say this one. Um, Sony is really cool as far as having cover anything. These do overheat with video though. Not the 6400 as much as the 6300, but Samsung, you can let it run forever and it won't overheat. So that's it. I am now going to uh, go up into the castle and take some pictures with this and share them with you. I'm gonna have a fun vacation and you're gonna come along. So subscribe for all kinds of obscure things, tips, tricks, free giveaways on Marcus Picks. Come on along, let's have a good vacation together. I'll see you in the next video.